role at Zomato also, I think, gave me a taste very early on of how business development and marketing kind of goes hand in hand. Um, and at that time, my thought was that marketing means campaigns, I'll make a big campaign, I'll make ads, banane ko milega. It'll, the sexy aspects of it is what really, right. you know, kind of stood up to me. You're thinking about salary, CTC, paisa. Always think about it in the sense of, the quality of work that you will do, the domain of work that you're going to be in versus the absolute package. That MBA ka learning is, in my mind, that's my opinion, not as effective. And I think from your smile, I've understood you've gone into an MBA directly out of your graduation, correct? I mean, TK, that's fine. You can, you can uh, you, in the last 10 seconds, you've roasted like most of my choices, but that's okay. <laughs> So uh, today on another episode of Ski Commenter, we have uh, with us Ms. Uh, Mansi Patlani. And am, am I pronouncing that right? Absolutely. All right. So she is currently the Vice President of uh, Marketing in at Tootsie. And she's worked with companies like Urban Company, Zomato, L'Oreal. And uh, she is, you know, a leader in the marketing space. She's completed an MBA from ISB. And prior to that, she did a Bachelor's in Economics from SRCC. So... Mansi, where do you think uh, your you know foray into the field of marketing started? Hmm. So um I think when I was in school, right, um, around 9th, 10th, when everybody's just thinking about what they want to become. And this question keeps getting asked to, you know, kids basically. It's as early as that, that you know, people start asking, where do you want to head? What do you want to do? Um and I was at that point, I think very clear, okay, I want to get into the Indian administrative services. Okay, I got IAS. Okay. Hai. Um, I was always that, uh, you know, padhaku bacha. so everybody was like, acha badi hai, isko marks aate hai, isko IAS mein bhej dete hai. So, um, you know, I was, and I was very interested in the arts and I was very interested in that kind of a domain. Um, and um, ultimately what came out of that after, you know, having kind of gone through school itself, I realized that IS is a lot of mehnat and just a lot of, uh, you know, my life is going to go into the preparation for it, etc. And I really wanted to, you know, kind of get out there and explore. Um, when I joined SRCC, I, uh, you know, kind of, uh, I did my economics honors from there. Uh, so economics as a subject was very interesting, but it was not something that I wanted to really, you know, kind of pursue in life. It was not something I was getting my jollies out of. So I spent most of my college time actually doing a lot of extracurricular activities um, and being a part of clubs, etc. And helping them promote, uh, you know, whatever events that we were doing. And I was the marketing lead for um, our uh, club the dramatic society club and we used to host a festival and that was the year that you know we really went all out with that festival with respect to the marketing the partnerships the kind of money that we could bring on board and that really excited me right um and that was something that i that came very naturally to me and i felt that frisson of excitement and that happy space kind of happening um so I think that's where I kind of decided that marketing is a domain that I'd want to kind of get into. Um, and also because I was I had been a um, student of arts um, and psychology was of very, very, you know, uh, great uh, importance and interest to me. So, uh, you know, that entire consumer psychology aspect of marketing also always held a lot of, uh, you know, water for me in itself. Um, so in SRCC, I think we had one company at that point, Zomato, which was I think at that point was about five years old, four and a half, five years old. Uh, people didn't even know what Zomato was, to be honest, at that at that point. I would tell people I work with Zomato. They would say, Tomato, what, what the hell is this? What company are you working for, right? Um, but that was the only company that came on campus at that point uh, that had a sales and marketing role. And uh, I was like, okay, okay, I'm not going to sit for any of the remaining placements because I don't want to be an analyst, I don't want to do this all. And this is what I'm going to kind of get into. So, uh, you know, despite it having, say, a lower salary per se, I said, okay, let me actually go towards what is my interest because right so that is basically the i put my blinders on and said okay let's go into the field of zomato and that is honestly where the entire foray into the entire sales and marketing uh you know domain began for me and my role at zomato also i think gave me a taste very early on of how business development and marketing kind of goes hand in hand um and at a very young age right in your first role you don't really always get the opportunity to do that uh to have a very holistic sense of what it takes 
takes to market uh, any business. The role at that point for Zomato, because the revenues used to come from ad sales, used to be actually to go out and talk to restaurants, onboard them, basically set the, sell them ad inventory on the Zomato platform. Um, and then, you know, it kind of... Uh, went into you know the entire client servicing aspect of it which was actually telling this uh, you know client out there that okay this is what works on my platform this is how you can position yourself this is the kind of creative that you should utilize because it will get the maximum CTRs this is what you can do with your business right from a growth perspective um, and the, I, I was I think very fortunate to have joined a startup very early on very like an early stage startup at that point of my career because I got the opportunity to really step above and beyond and learn the entire holistic picture of what marketing truly is um, and I'll come to that in a bit as well because my viewpoints on marketing have changed over a period of time and I would like to take this session to kind of I think educate uh, the larger audience out there who's looking for jobs in marketing on how to perceive the world of marketing in itself as well um, so yeah, so basically Zomato gave me that kind of opportunity. Um, and at that time, I thought yeah, marketing means campaigns, I'll make a big campaign, I'll make ads, banane ko milega. It'll, the sexy aspects of it is what really, you know, kind of stood up to me, right? Um, and then... From, uh, so I was a young leader, uh, you know, program recruit for Indian School of Business. Uh, so that basically they used to, they came uh, during SRCC itself. Most of our process happened during that time. So when I stepped into Zomato, I already knew that I had, you know, a placement with a B school two years down the line. And I was very certain that I wanted to work for about two years so that I could get a sense and maximum out of my MBA as well. Uh, so then decided to go off to ISB after two years at uh, Zomato. And um, at ISB, I think when, you know, I kind of interacted with uh, the larger audience there and I also, you know, kind of understood the various subjects. Again, the subjects that were of very uh, of deep interest to me were the marketing subjects. I went and I stood for marketing club president and I actually ended up getting it despite being one of the youngest members of that entire batch with barely any experience in the domain of marketing. Um, and that's, I think, where my love story with marketing just got even further cemented with the interaction that I had with my peers, people who had worked in that domain, and also just what, you know, we got to learn through our professors and through the coursework in itself. Uh, also did a bunch of these, you know, case studies, etc. with, a, in you know, multiple competitions across the board. And what always ended up interesting me as a business proposition or a problem statement were usually the marketing side of things. And I just found that spark or that pizzazz or that interest in it. Um, um, so I said, okay, let's pursue the entire sales and marketing front again. Um, and those are the kind of placements I decided to very, again, with a very, you know, kind of fo laser sharp focus sit for. Um, I did not, you know, everybody in an MBA kind of applies for all the jobs that come because ultimately, hota ki nokri milke nikal na hai, right? we need to get right. the maximum out of the money that we paid for our MBA um, and right. consulting roles. I'm pretty sure you are, uh, you know, uh, well versed with that ecosystem, but consulting yeah. roles are basically the ones that are most sought after because paisa hai and of course it's just the domain in itself. As I clear, ye nahi karna hai, right? I want to right. very clearly focus on the sales and marketing front and I sat for those companies and as the marketing club president, I made sure that my companies are rahi hai. So I recruited those companies and kind of made sure that they were coming onto campus, uh, you know, to recruit uh, people in the sales and marketing division. Um, so, and alongside that entire process, I also developed an interest towards the entire beauty domain. Um, I think YouTube boom of creators uh, was, you know, just kind of taking over. And as a generation, us millennials have started watching a lot of digital content. And YouTube was one of those first forays where we started watching that content, right? Um, so I got into this entire beauty space. And then when L'Oreal actually start, decided to come on campus, I said, okay, let's give it a go. So we had L'Oreal, we had AB InBev, we had HUL, we had a bunch of these organizations coming for their management training programs um, and some sales roles and I said okay let's sit for all um, and ended up choosing actually got recruited across the board for all three I made it I got the offer from two of them but I decided to then go down the world of beauty and marketing put together um, and L'Oreal being the kind of marketer it is right the, for, the uh, it's actually defined the way beauty advertising and beauty marketing needs to happen in any domain across the globe I decided that's the right foray for me so I think a couple of 
principles that have kind of guided me throughout my life in terms of the decisions that i've made is do what find that passion right find that area that interests you and then very single mindedly put your blinkers on and go after it um and if you don't know what you want to do then explore everything but whatever is giving you that inner joy right jisko dekhkar actually laga okay i've had a productive time and i've actually learned something out of this process and this is something i can foresee myself doing in the near future go after you know that kind of an option and you'll find your way as you kind of uh, progress uh, in the future so yeah i decided to join loreal and within that domain again it was very similar to the entire management training programs like you have 6 months of sales stint 6 months of a marketing stint um there i was fortunate enough to actually get um uh, the brand nix professional makeup as my marketing stint brand um and that was a startup within the entire loreal domain digital first brand wanted to you know kind of it was a fairly new brand for the loreal ecosystem and i got i was it was a very lean team so i got the opportunity again to really learn about and beyond what say would be there in a traditional large brand um where somebody you know would be working within that domain um i got a chance to launch you know a retail store so understood the entire offline process um i i you know so in that 6 months stint got to do a lot more work than i think a lot of other people did in their existing stints at that point because they were just larger brands and already had that kind of a team uh, you know already existing there um So yeah, so that I think further solidified the fact that I really, really enjoy this space, um, and I also really enjoy the zero to one aspect of it. I really enjoy setting things up where I am the one who's you know kind of doing all the thinking and calling all the shots, um, and that's basically where I decided to you know kind of move back towards the startup ecosystem, um, because there the consumer problem is not really figured out. right uh, the consumer insight is not really figured out and to run a business not just to run marketing campaigns but to truly run a business from a product point of view one truly needs to understand their consumer right so in that lens marketing is actually the thing that drives growth because they are the custodians of the customer they are the custodians of that consumer insight they are the ones who will go out and talk to these consumers and tell you okay this is the insight on which our product can be improved or we can actually launch you know new products new domains um so that's actually for me the sexiest part of marketing more than uh, you know the making of campaigns etc that's all a by product of the first part which is really lending on what is the consumer problem that you're solving and how will you go out and solve that for the consumers and you know kind of the, then the entire four p's kind of come into yeah. uh play. and uh, you asked me a question on where mbas really help you with you know the entire domain of marketing and in your experience overall i think yeah. mbas help you structure things better and get a much larger or holistic view of how businesses are run um and that is what you know you would kind of take away from your mba from you know when you look at those cases and you understand what businesses do the second thing is your network um uh, fortunately unfortunately the world works on relationships and it works on you know a network of people right from you know where you choose to work so very practical point of view ki acha yaar जॉब ऑफर है या रेफरल मिल सकता है एटसेट्रा टू आल्सो मोर ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन बीइंग you know kind of uh, exchange between different kinds of people so today for example if i am grappling with a business problem that i want to you know kind of get some co- external context on it just takes one whatsapp or one email to my entire alum group and i get somebody who i can talk to um and they've you know dealt with this kind of a problem before and i can take inspiration from that so that's i think the true value that an mba you know kind of brings to the table within any domain be it marketing be it genman be it anything else So yeah, coming back to uh, you know the journey. So I basically uh, decided that okay, a startup where the consumer problem needs to be fleshed out, and I get to again create a brand from scratch is basically where I'd want to you know kind of grow. So urban company came around, um, and I was also very clear that I wanted to be within the beauty domain. So the blinkers on in the beauty space, beauty marketing, this being my space, that is basically what I kind of went after. um so urban company you know kind of happened through uh, a connect and uh, had that conversation felt as if i was really coming back home because i'd 
started my career off with a startup um and there i got the opportunity again to work on a bunch of marketing divisions uh, so began with you know being the consumer insights custodian as well as um, you know the person leading the entire influencer management and social media piece very quickly spiraled into because we were an app based system at that point very quickly spiraled into understanding okay how do i merchandise better to the consumer so there my l'oreal merchandising experience kind of helped with understanding how does that that principle of shelf space and merchandising and you know top of mind recall um and i level you know viewing of consumer journeys basically came into the picture and right. started working on app journeys consumer journeys there um and slowly you know kind of moved into the entire category management space which is or brand management space in itself um and that's again where i faced you know one of those questions in in your career which define the path that you take and your you know kind of career opportunities way forward um so i got the chance there to uh, evaluate whether i wanted to be the category manager for the largest business or you know a bunch of smaller businesses that could be future growth drivers and um there i very clearly i remember taking this call saying okay too many people uh, too many cooks in the broth on you know the cash cow so let's go towards something that could answer future questions on growth um and i took up that particular vertical where i was handling about three categories and very quickly out of that we were able to identify a hero category um and kind of move towards you know uh, solving what are the four p's for this category who is the customer that we are talking to uh, you know what is the price what should be the proposition uh, how should we go out and promote them what should be the channels in which we should reach out so very quickly you know kind of for working on the strategy part as well as simultaneously executing that strategy uh from you know a go to market perspective um so got an opportunity to work in that domain and i think that really again catapulted my growth to the next level where i joined urban company as a senior marketing manager and uh actually within the course of those one and a half years i moved to the next role which was uh, an avp role uh, in the entire marketing domain and there i was given the opportunity to now take point on the platform level growth for the middle east market sitting out of india um, and marketing cost center hai hamesha sasti jagah mein baithega so that opportunity just kind of came to me because urban company had launched in the middle east wanted to grow that market so again got that opportunity to you know really uh, pre, you know kind of explore a new market from a consumer inside tam sizing uh, what should be the messaging strategy how should we go to market point of view entirely um and then also kind of take that strategy and put it into action and see those kind of results kind of coming in so uh, you know did that for about a year and because i could you know i was handling that kind of a scope of work i saw my next promotion and next growth kind of come within that space really fast uh, so within the span of a year i moved to director of marketing um, and i was going to continue within the middle east space but then i think they had a requirement within the india division um, on two different roles one was an innovation role which is a new role which was being set up which again was working more on the strategy piece of the marketing front how do you really drive growth through getting an insight from a deeper insight from the consumer on what will trigger them to utilize your brand um so started working in that domain and very you know slowly started taking over the entire salon at home business for india um and again you know within the beauty domain was leading that entire vertical to identify what are going to be my next growth tracks etc um and within that space i think urban company had become quite a big giant by that time yeah. um you know in that entire three year journey from the three year mark to the seven year mark it really had made a name for itself and i then felt that okay i've kind of learned a bunch of things from this entire ecosystem maybe now it's time for me to move to the next level and utilize whatever i've learned in terms of both strategic thinking as well as um, you know kind of executional ability and take it to you know a startup that's at that 3 year 4 year mark again and that's what you know kind of put my foray towards the entire space of clinical makeovers also because the area is expanding and compounding at a very good rate year on year so decided to kind of move towards that domain and that's how you know toothsy ended up happening um so yeah i think what has always fueled my love for marketing has been that consumer understanding it it i get my kicks out of 
talking to consumers and understanding what makes them tick what makes them actually consume one brand over the other um and what are those de decision making factors the second aspect of it is always of course the sexy aspect which is the creative the advertising the messaging etc and i think now what has kind of come into the picture is how do you drive that growth profitably right how do you drive strategy and growth strategy in a way how do you work with your business development partners to really drive direction on how growth can come in for any sort of brand across the board um and that is where i think my definition of marketing has evolved from that sexy definition to now a more practical definition where i truly see that marketing works at um uh, you know the center of strategy for any organization right. because we are the custodians of consumer insight and that is how a marketer should really you know kind of start thinking from the get go it is not just about you know taking campaigns to air it is honestly about the the hard work really comes into what goes behind that particular campaign from right from you know who are you talking to to what is the kind of messaging that you need to bring to them to what is the new business opportunity that you could possibly open up for your brand because you've spoken to enough number of consumers across the board so yeah i think um, i've answered your question on a, i've answered multiple questions here i'll wait for you to ask me a few more uh, th thank you so much for like taking us through that journey and uh, so a couple of things came up in my mind while you were talking about it so yeah. uh, first of all uh, like you went and did your M mba from isb right so that's a question that a lot of people grapple with you know uh, one year versus two year mba right so there's that question correct then hmm. another question that a lot of people grapple with is ki um, so as as i said you, you got an opportunity with zomato right when when you started off uh, from uh, src so hmm. um, you know i understand that an mba would give you a structure but there are a lot of hmm. people who choose to not go for an mba and still you know still make correct. it in the marketing and sales field absolutely so there's that question ki should we mm. like is an mba really necessary yes it helps but for a lot of people it's a very significant investment at least like financially correct so is it absolutely. is it worth it in the end i mean yes we do get access to like a lot of jobs uh, a strong alumni network but if you know one's happy with what they have right now should they go for that or should they go for an mba after you know a certain point so there's that and the third thing is uh, that uh, you know after you know, a lot of people think that they have a problem with again like the what you termed as you know the sexy aspect of marketing uh, that's what a lot of people think about right like even when i was in my bachelor's the uh, i was also a marketing enthusiast i'd done a couple of marketing internships but they were mostly uh, so i interned with tinder right and it it all revolved around you know making creatives and not so much when it comes to consumer insight but of course that's important but our role usually just involved creatives and campaigns and so on and so forth. so um post mba at least what i saw in my college uh, the kind of roles apart from i think l'oreal png hul cup there's like a new digicom role and then i, I, mm. I guess uh, there's just yeah hul png l'oreal and then there's one more firm that uh, brings brand management right uh, like a marketing role others usually have like a, a mandatory 3 to 4 year sales stint right and right. a lot of people get deterred from like that particular field because of that sales stint yeah gaon mein ja ke rehna padega and uh, bore ho jayenge and so on and so forth right. so what do you have to say about these three three things understood so on the first question right which is one year mba versus two year mba right um i think it's a function of how much opportunity cost are you willing to pay right yeah. um and it's also a function of what do you want to kind of get out of your mba um so for for somebody so isb for example a one year mba honestly works very well for people who have say about four to five years of experience have actually you know kind of been working for a while um and want to you know kind of take the next step jump so usually uh, the kind of people who get attracted to a one year mba are those people who who you now want to move domains right so i think it comes to your third question people who've been in sales for a while want to make the move to marketing or you know have been in on the marketing side of thing want to make the leap to consulting operations kara hai now want to make the move to another domain so that is one reason to kind of do that at the least opportunity cost from a one year mba perspective one year jayega versus do year do saal jayega it's those years where you could be possibly earning that much money and gaining that kind of growth right, right. so that is one aspect of it the other aspect of it is honestly between the two 
in terms of experience um i have not seen too much of a significant difference and that may just be because i have been a part of an mba that had that kind of a um you know peer set where i was interacting with the creme de la creme of india because that's the kind of people who kind of get through to isb um and are the people who have had you know uh, the average work ex for example is about 5 to 6 years the average age of that batch is around 28 29 which is not the case with most two year mbas which are yeah. mostly directly out of college i think the larger point i'd like to make it's not about a one year mba or a two year mba it's genuinely what you want to do out of that mba and the first principle to really think about an mba is it's all application based agar aapko pata hi nahi hai ki aap kis real life incident mein usko apply kar paoge or you don't have enough context that mba ka learning is in my mind that's my opinion not as effective right so if for example you take that time after your graduation to work for say 2 to 3 years um and then you get into your mba you will be able to really get the max out of the coursework as well as the conversations that you have with people um and unfortunately that is the opposite uh, you know kind of ecosystem that exists in india because ye hota hai ki apni padhai khatam kar lo uske baad kaam hi karna hai Yeah. Um so my recommendation I think to most people who are seeking jobs today or are just you know kind of looking at an MBA as an option always prefer getting that work ex first even if it is at a meager level try getting that work ex first and then going and getting the maximum out of your MBA and I think from your smile I've understood you've gone into an MBA directly out of your graduation correct I mean ठीक है that's fine you can you can uh, you in the last 10 seconds you've roasted like most of my choices but that's okay <laughs> so yeah i think that's one thing um because i've seen that um that difference in terms of understanding even amongst my peer set amongst people who mm-hmm. went in directly for an mba versus people who've actually done a job and then you know kind of gone in for their mba um yeah. and then the you can't take away from the fact that an mba also gives you that uplift in your career right so it's it's it either helps you change disciplines or it helps you take that one level shift up in your salary etc uh, yeah. because you've put in that time and effort and money to gain that information right um mm-hmm. so i think those are the two reasons to kind of go in for an mba however at some level i've also seen that people in the existing domain who have had like 6 years 7 years odd of experience for them an mba only makes sense if they really want to do either one of these things right if their growth is really stunted by by not having an mba or the fact of the matter is that they want to really shift disciplines otherwise agar aapko usi discipline mein rehna hai there is no better mba honestly than on the job training mba is also ultimately theoretical and marketing yeah. to a bahut had tak वैसे ही सीखते हो जब तुम काम करते हो राइट एंड देर इज डेफिनेटली मेरिट टू यू नो काइंड पुटिंग इन दिस माय आई थिंक व्यू पॉइंट वुड बी दैट इफ यू आर इन दैट जीरो टू यू नो काइंड ऑफ फोर ईयर फाइव ईयर डोमेन इन योर करियर एंड यू आर इंटरेस्टेड इन काइंड ऑफ टेकिंग अ स्टेप जंप फ्रॉम यू नो एन अर्निंग पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू एज वेल एज से स्विच इन योर करियर ट्रेजेक्ट्री गो इन फॉर एन एम बी ए बट इफ यू क्रॉस दैट फाइव सिक्स ईयर मार्क वेर यू आर ऑन अ सॉलिड path upward within the existing domain that you are you know in um and you are learning more on the job continue with that sometimes better growth comes there and your learning kind of becomes more and more there within that domain um uh, and i I've, i've had multiple friends who've kind of taken that route as well uh, and i don't see any difference in learning between say them or me after having really done an mba um uh, so yeah i would say do an mba if your career trajectory is basically stunted at some level and you really want to take the next step jump um uh, because ultimately you will get that increment for having you know kind of educated yourself further um and the second aspect of it is do it for the network as simple as that yeah yeah um i think your second question was on uh you know uh whether uh, people should actually you know kind of um, i think i answered that question alongside which is yeah, mba yeah, karna hai nahi karna chahiye yeah, yeah. kind of answer that question side by side um and i think a third question was on how do you actually get into marketing right yeah, yeah. uh those sales dilemma mar- ki pehle sales karna padega correct so because at the base level marketing ke bahut kam roles hote hain 
राइट इट्स इधर यू नो वेन यू एंटर इट्स मोर ऑफ एन एनलिस्ट काइंड ऑफ रोल या आपको परफॉर्मेंस मार्केटिंग में या लोग एजेंसीज के थ्रू घुसते हैं बिकॉज दोज आर दी एरियाज वे यू आर ट्रूली गेटिंग एक्सेस टू मार्केटिंग ई रोल्स एट अ मैनेजीरियल लेवल मार्केटिंग रोल्स डोंट कम कम अबाउट सो ईजी एंड मोस्ट कंपनीज हैव यू नो दैट सेगमेंट ऑफ सेंग पहले सेल्स करोगे फिर मार्केटिंग आएगा आपकी लाइफ में एंड दैट इज वाई यू ऑल्सो डोंट सी सो मच हायरिंग हैपनिंग एट अ मार्केटिंग लेवल इवन आफ्टर योर एम बी ए आई ऑनेस्टली गॉट वेरी लकी लॉरियाल देर बिकॉज माई प्लेसमेंट आउट ऑफ दैट मैनेजमेंट ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम हैपन विद इन द डोमेन ऑफ मार्केटिंग बट फॉर मोस्ट पीपल दैट्स नॉट द केस आई वुड से डोंट टेक दैट एज अ as a as a negative right a sales stint honestly teaches you a lot about the consumer and about what you are selling sales and marketing are two facets of the same function which is driving growth and one aspect and basically sales owns the distribution aspect of it and at some level the promotion aspect of it marketing owns a little more of the strategy and the messaging aspect of it right yeah. so you basic it's it's if you divide it amongst the four p's you are actually getting trained on these two p's which will serve as a very strong input into really creating the strategy and you know the messaging and the communication because you've really worked on ground with consumers and i would say go in and do those sales stints i myself have done those sales stints before and i can very honestly say that they've added so much context to my life um and i'll give you a beautiful example that um you know one of my previous bosses gave and he was working on durex as a brand actually um one of their biggest launches durex jeans actually ended up you know not doing very well from a sales point of view or a business development or growth of company point of view but did really well from a branding point of view they got awards matlab everybody was talking about it but didn't really mm-hmm. translate into business outcome the point kya hai marketing ka entire job is to drive growth profitably करेक्ट सो मेरे को अवार्ड मिल जाएगा मार्केटिंग कैंपेन बढ़िया करने के लिए लेकिन अगर उससे कोई बिजनेस आउटकम नहीं आ रहा कोई ग्रोथ नहीं आ रहा है तो दैट्स अ दैट्स नॉट अ सक्सेस एट अ ब्रांड और अ कंपनी लेवल करेक्ट एंड द मेजर इनसाइट दे मिस्ड आउट ऑन इसकी यार एक्चुअली वो सेल्स में हाउ डज द रियालिटी ऑफ अ रिटेलर शॉप काइंड ऑफ हैपन एंड वहां पर इन द सेल्स रोमेन अगर वो एक पर्टिकुलर वे में अपना शेल्फ स्पेस डिजाइन करेंगे तो देल गेट बेटर यू नो डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन वर्सेज दी अदर if you don't do those kind of sales things and don't have that understanding yeah. in any case your holistic understanding from a consumer point of view is missing because that journey of the consumer is missing so i would say do your due diligence and do your i would say sales is a due diligence stint for anybody aiming to get into marketing definitely go in and do your sales stint pay your dues there because it helps with kind of thinking through and becoming a better marketer in the future yeah or the other way to directly get into the marketing domain is go down the agency domain go down the agency advertising ecosystem domain because that is where you know your uh, creative aspects of work and your media planning and all of that happens um and that's a different kind of learning in itself altogether and then you can always make switch over to the brand side but these are the two areas or aspects through which you can gain entry uh, and this is when i'm talking about marketing in the um say larger organizations pov the third route one can take is work with a startup right startups actually give more weightage to hustle to culture and the kind of uh, i think mentality that you bring to the table more so than the job that you can do because if you feel that you can learn on the job go towards the startup work there uh, you know kind of work within the marketing domain you learn actually a lot more so than the entire marketing ecosystem um, right. in itself right so uh, two other things that we we plan like uh, was in my like so first key it's it's a question around you know getting into the marketing sphere so this is i think uh, this happens a lot in the two year program so uh, hmm. marketing companies generally have a preference for like uh, a female candidates and b people who have Uh, zero workers like the pressures mm-hmm. but at least like uh, works below one year or so and mm-hmm. firstly i knew a couple of people who wanted to get into that domain and they were very not knowledgeable and interested but uh, they couldn't because of these two factors because they had either too much work mm-hmm. ethics or you know so on and so forth. so what advice would you have for such people to get into that domain and uh, actually even let's just cover this first and then we can move on to cool so 
on the entire so basically out of a two year work ex right uh, out of a two year mba most of your batch is basically people who have lesser years of work ex right are mainly graduate so honestly it's also a function of that um and when a company evaluates coming to a particular campus they'll get those kind of roles only right so basically agar management trainee role hi lekar aa rahi hai company kyunki ek batch size ek certain way mein hai right and that is also being born out of this entire piece ki let's finish up, finish our education in one go right yeah. uh, so agar role hi waisa aa raha hai from these some of these larger companies um it is going to happen that ultimately the preference is given to people who are freshers i'm saying one year two years wala work ex basically is what is preferred for a management trainee program because most of these companies basically come from the school of thought that we will teach our company ethos and culture to this person and they are going to be much more receptive to this entire domain and it fits better with within the you know age bracket etc because most of these companies are actually career companies right where people actually enter spend a little bit of time and they invest a large amount of money in you know kind of ramping up your journey across the years so they want to be sure that okay at the end of the day we are going to select people who are going to be in it for the long run um and i think that is where the preference for say a uh, you know a candidate with lesser years of work ex kind of comes in because you are then just more likely to stick with the same company as you kind of go along uh when it comes to for people who have more years of work ex and want to get within the marketing domain like i said before this right there are couple of routes one route being this entire management trainee sales wala route if that route is not open to you there is nothing stopping you from looking outside campus at other domains which are equally expanding you know kind of fast enough so there are enough and more um you know startup that are looking for people with those 2 to 3 years of work ex to work within the marketing field and wahan par aapka prior work ex is not really something that really matters all that much what matters is more the mentality that you bring on to the table and the interest that you showcase that i want to you know kind of learn about this domain from that interest wala piece i'll also kind of say okay if you as a professional are 100% certain that i want to get into the field of marketing and even if you have more experience and you know kind of going in that you know that proclivity hai companies ki to lean towards candidates who are who have lesser years of work ex or are of a certain gender i honestly yeah. i haven't come across that bias per se uh, but if that particular bias also exists i think the best way to show a company that you're interested is to actually kind of put that across in your cover letter is to actually put that across in your cv and there are multiple ways to kind of do that over the course of your mba journey as well now somebody like me i did not come from a marketing experience right but i still got into the marketing domain why because across the year in my mba what i did was marketing i be, i uh, went down the line of you know kind of being a part of the marketing club actually leading the marketing club um the second part over there was that i spent a lot of time doing a lot of case competitions uh, which were marketing centric and which kind of helped me grow my information in that domain the third thing was within my current work ex i actually brought out what were the aspects that excited me which were marketing aspects of things so when it comes to like say for example ad visibility or uh, you know consumer growth alignment or whatever that, those are the kind of things that brought out as my takeaways from my work experience so you can package yourself as somebody who is wholly and solely focused towards learning the world of marketing and uh, that also takes you a long way right so two parts to it again one being present yourself as somebody showcase your interest if you are really interested and have that laser sharp focus it should come across in that one piece of paper you have to kind of reflect yourself to that organization um and you can do multiple things across the course of that year to do that the second aspect is if your focus is as sharp don't fall down this entire pressure of taking a job out of campus and saying yaar yahi karna hai right mere ko placement leni hai fir baad mein dekhenge look outside there is more and enough in the ecosystem where you can actually take that risk and go join a younger company who's willing to take that risk with you um and also i think the third point is don't overthink all of this that much uh, a very common statistic actually says that people actually land in their dream job or the job that they want to actually about 2 to 3 years after their mba and not so much in the first job that they get out of their mba in itself yeah. 
yeah so those i think are the ways in which somebody who's possibly you know kind of ha- uh, biased against when it comes to getting a marketing role can possibly enter that uh, domain in itself um i think your second question was uh, about the entire isb and how pricey the mba is correct yeah, so- So two two like uh, two parts of it. First, that it's it's a one year MBA, so it's hyper compressed, and a two year MBA is already compressed. So learning Correct. within one year and applying it, you know, can be a tough task for a lot of people. So there's that aspect. Correct. The second aspect is a lot of people are concerned about the fact that it has a large batch size. So you know, individual attention milega ki nahi milega, and then again placements hmm. because hmm. you know again IMs are known for you know placement packages and all of that, and Correct. ISB some people have reservations about you know. the end placement that happens so what would correct. you say about that so when it comes to i think the price of the mba it is always a trade off right for most people because india is about that at the end of the day not everybody can afford to pay for their own mba not everybody can afford to pay for an mba a lot of people take student loans and actually pay off their entire education okay. fund my mind is be very practical about it right uh, now i can come from my own experience and actually tell you that at the time i was kind of getting into isb it was not as pricey as it is today uh today an isb mba is equivalent to you know kind of going to singapore and getting an mba uh itna kharcha usme usme bhi hota hai usme bhi hota hai so you have to kind of decide what is it that is your spending capacity for something that is going to give you that return on investment uh at that at the time when i was making my decision i had the opportunity to apply for the ivy leagues to apply for you know uh, these kind of colleges ex- you know abroad as well right. um and uh, i would say it's a very similar you know juxtaposition an mba there would cost me a crore plus an mba here was costing me whatever it costed me at that particular point of time and the trade off was very simple i was like out of my mba what i'm going to get is a job and i do not want to either on myself or on my parents put any sort of financial pressure in terms of actually completing my education right um and i wanted to be in that space that i could comfortably pay off my mba yeah. so i took that call saying okay i am going to then go in for isb because it is a cheaper alternative to what i could get out there from that aspect of things and of course the differential between an isb mba and other indian mbas was not as stark at that point right. so today Take that decision very practically, yeah. Because ultimately, वो MBA खत्म करके तुमको एक job package मिलेगा, जिसके basis पे तुम over a basis, uh, over a period of two to three years or four to five years, you'll end up paying off your MBA. In most cases, where you're taking a loan, so be very ruthlessly practical about that decision. Um, and uh, you know, understand what that MBA again, like I told you, understand what that MBA does for you. What is the goal out of that MBA for you when you are entering that space? Is it that you want to make a switch in domain? Is it that you want to you know kind of get an uplift in package, or is it that you want to just make a network of people because later on you want to you know kind of pursue whatever your own stuff in the future, right? So. Uh, very very practical decision don't go in for it if you're if you don't feel confident in your ability to pay it off there is no point of doing that sort of an mba or education honestly um the second aspect of it is uh, i think the placement packages themselves and the batch size at isb um and the compression of everything into one year to be honest it takes there are people who thrive in that kind of an ecosystem right jahan par um if i say my take away from an mba is the network is basically the uh, um you know the learning from at least a course work point of view both of those things can be accomplished in the phase of one year and in fact i think it tests your metal a lot in terms of order of prioritization ki aapko what is important what do you want to kind of take out of that year a lot of people very single mindedly focused on you know kind of getting the best job out there and hence working on their grades a lot of people single handedly focused on network kyunki mera take away from mba was going to be my network in itself a lot of people focused on pursuing what will get them to that end goal in terms of the job offer that you get um and you know the domain that you're able to kind of get into so i would say it's a, it's more a factor of focus and what you take out of that one year ये भी हो सकता है कि यार दो साल में भी तुम उतनी ही लर्निंग लेके निकलोगे बट यू मे हैव हैड जस्ट अ लिटिल मोर टाइम टू एक्सप्लोर 
on the one year mba side i would say be more focused and know what you want out of your mba ecosystem and you will be able to you know derive the same value that you get out of a two year mba um and possibly when you know we are just out of graduation and we've really not hit uh, you know the real world in a way um it can be actually comforting to have a two year system where you know you have the time and the ability to kind of spread yourself across uh, this entire domain and of course one aspect of it is uh, the internships and experience and the pre placement offers which isb doesn't have but it does have access to jobs that possibly would not come to you know one of uh, the campuses which have younger age groups or the kind of roles that come over here so you can't really compare the two mbas apple to apple solely because purpose is very different and the cohort of people that come to an isb mba or a one year mba even within an iim ecosystem right an executive mba in a way um are very very different and the outcomes out of it are very different uh, i think in terms of the packages that you were mentioning um i'll give you my own example in this case so from the marketing domain right uh, there were a bunch of uh, packages that were coming which were uh, you know some of them were upwards of 20 and some of them were downwards of 20 um i i was actually one of those people who ended up taking a package even though i had access to a package which was higher about 25 30% higher in terms of the salary component in itself i actually ended up taking the lower end package uh and that was my own decision the reason being again is focus on what you want out of that entire piece it's not a two year journey it's actually a it's your entire career that you're building right so keep that five year view out saying where do i want to end up and what is the domain that interests me today that will enable me to function at my best and will enable me to get where i want to much faster because what actually drives performance or growth is one is of course the passion you bring to the table and your education etc all of those basic things the other thing is basically the interest and uh, you know the thought process that you bring into this entire picture if you are really doing something that you enjoy you will grow much faster at it it's yeah. it's a proven thing right like agar kuch interest hota hai to aap us cheez ko aur mehnat se karte ho and that shows through in your work that shows through in uh, you know what you want to do and people identify that within that organization and put you on that career trajectory so whenever you're thinking about salary ctc paisa always think about it in the sense of the quality of work that you will do the domain of work that you're going to be in versus the absolute package because that package will net out in 3 to 5 years you will end up in the same space as other people because you would have just had a faster trajectory in growth because you're doing something that interests you as simple as that this is a personal question right um so currently you are the vp of marketing at utsi so do you have like a vision for yourself ki okay this is where i want to end up at this is the position i want to be in or like this is the kind of work i'm going to in like let's say 10 years or whatever like whatever time frame correct so um if you would ask me this question about 2 years ago i would have said me ko cmo banna hai and whatever whatever at this point i think at this your uh, dreams also keep evolving as you move you know kind of um, okay, as you become older in your career and you explore new opportunities i think for me the next few years in the next 5 years i actually see myself either starting off something on my own um and kind of building my own brand doing my own business because at the end of the day that is what excites me that entire zero to one journey building something of my own uh, self and uh, ultimately if you do go down the line of entrepreneurship even though it is risky the reward is much greater so uh, my entire jo- you know th- kind of thought process is that i save a big enough corpus that i have a little bit of a fallback and um, i'm able to you know kind of go down the journey of entrepreneurship and exploring whether i'd want to do something on my own um, the other area that i kind of see myself mm-hmm. operating in is of uh, you know kind of solving business problems for other people um in terms of say a uh, so i've actually come full circle in the entire consulting space where i began by saying i don't want to do consulting and uh, i want to really get my hands dirty etc to now saying okay i have had enough experience getting my hands dirty that i understand 
what is the right strategy to give out to people and I understand the strategic domain as well. So I'd like to kind of be in that space where I'm able to offer consulting help, growth help to new brands out there. Um, and I think those are the two domains that I'd like to, you know, kind of pursue in the next couple of years, because that's where I derive my pleasure out of. Um, and you'll notice throughout this conversation I think money is honestly not something that drives me. And I I understand the privilege that I come from when I say that. Um, then the privilege that I have to actually say that, okay, I can pursue my passion. A lot of people don't have that choice or that opportunity. So I recognize that, but I'll still go down the line of saying that um, the money will follow you if you follow what you truly believe in and if you follow what truly kind of gives you um, that high and that, you know, that ability to wake up every morning and show up with a fresh thought process. Uh, and once you add value, that value will come back to you. So don't be short-sighted when you're making decisions when it comes to job and career uh, because a decision here and a decision there or a few lakhs here and a few lakhs there will not make a difference in the longer, in the larger scheme of things. Uh, so yeah, I think it leads to a more fruitful and enjoyable career more so than just a source of money or livelihood. All right, I think we've covered, uh, you know, a lot during this conversation and we, a lot of our viewers are going to be very interested in this particular video. Thank you so much for just on this podcast. And do you have anything else you would like to cover? Thank you so much for having me. No, I'm good. Thank you so much for having me. It was a real uh, pleasure talking to you. And uh, I hope that this is actually very helpful for people out there. Thank you.